The president and Mitt Romney in a sharp character clash as both candidates hit the road to bring in the big money for a fierce general election battle. The president has just arrived on the West Coast we'll, where he'll host a fundraiser in Seattle before moving on to Shea Clooney for a star-studded event expected to raise some $15 million. There he is by Air Force One. That number may even see a boost with a Hollywood crowd that's been vocal about its support for the president's affirmation of same-sex marriage just 24 hours ago. And it's that groundbreaking statement that's drawing a stark contrast with the president's opponent, Mitt Romney, today. For even as Mr. Romney travels to Omaha to milk the Midwest cash cow, he's facing a blistering portrayal of him as an anti-gay prep school bully in today's Washington Post. The story leads with the recollection of a hazing incident at the elite Cranbrook School, with Romney leading the charge against a presumed homosexual student who wore bleach blonde hair draped over one eye. Five of Romney's fellow students interviewed separately recall the incident the same way, including Romney's close friend Matthew Friedman. Quote, Friedman entered Stevens Hall off the school's collegiate quad to find Romney marching out of his own room ahead of a prep school posse shouting about their plan to cut Lorber's hair. Friedman followed them to a nearby room where they came upon Lorber, tackled him and pinned him to the ground. As Lorber, his eyes filling with tears, screamed for help, Romney repeatedly clipped his hair with a pair of scissors. Thomas Buford, the wrestling champion who helped Romney restrain the boy, later apologized to Lorber, telling the Post, quote, to this day, it still troubles me. But Mitt Romney, saying he didn't recall the incident, offered a much more tepid response. Well, you just say to yourself that back in high school, you know, I, I, I did some uh, dumb things, and, and if anybody was, uh, was hurt by that or offended, well, obviously I apologize. If anybody was hurt or offended, Mr. Romney, if... Bear in mind, this is not the only incident. A student who later came out as gay says Romney would taunt him with "add a girl when he spoke out in class. But never mind, as usual, Mitt's got a three-letter answer to all of his personality problems. There's no question, Brian, that, that uh, uh, you know, I became a very different person uh, as I met Anne. When he met Anne, wait a second, but that was way back when was it? I saw Anne in elementary school. She was a second grader. I was a fourth grader. Uh, I was in fourth grade, and she was in second grade. Oh, yeah. She was in second grade. I was in fourth grade. I didn't notice her. She was in the second grade. I was in the fourth grade, so I paid her no attention. Right. He was in the fourth grade. She was in the second grade. Seems like it wasn't early enough, does it? Let's bring in our panel now. With us from Washington, MSNBC political analyst, former RNC chairman Michael Steele, MSNBC political analyst David Korn, who's also the Washington bureau chief for Mother Jones magazine and the author of the New York Times best-selling Showdown, and MSNBC contributor Jonathan Capehart, an opinion writer for the Washington Post. Good afternoon to all of you, David. So, hey, Mitt Martin. Romney can remember the height of the trees when he was growing up, <laughs> the love of driving, the meeting of the love of his life in fourth grade, right. but he can't remember leading a gang of bullies who attacked a child who simply appeared to be different to him. He can't remember that. It's hard to believe. I mean, and I guess this is no. what he means. I guess this is what he means by management experience, because he didn't face down this guy on his own. He rounded up a, a mob, a crew of kids, to get this guy down. Listen, when I was in high school, I had my share of fights and fisticuffs, and I got into a bunch of brawls. And I remember the most significant ones. And I certainly believe I would remember leading a pack of kids. And what what do you know? Four or five of the people who were found by the Washington Post all believe it. And they all provided tremendous details. So even if Mitt Romney had somehow magically, psychologically repressed this episode from his, from his dark memories, well, then I think reading the story today might shift a few pieces loose up in his, in his dark recesses. And he would say, you know what, that was really a low moment, and it's too bad the fellow is dead, and I can't really apologize anymore. Right. Michael, I'm slightly confused, because Romney says, and I'm quoting him, I don't remember that yeah. incident. 
didn't. Then he says, I certainly don't believe that I thought the fellow was homosexual. That was the furthest thing from our minds back in the 1960s, so that was not the case. How can he be categoric that the child was certainly not victimized because he was homosexual, but then says he can't remember the incident? I mean, isn't this a classic case of what we might call selective amnesia? It, it, you know, Martin, it, it may be. I mean, I can't get into his mind about what he recalls or doesn't recall on the, on the one hand. On the other hand, uh, I think the broader point, and, and David touched on this, and we were going back and forth on this a little bit earlier, you know, I think the, the cleaner thing to do would be come out and say, look, particularly if you've got five people saying this is what happened, to say, look, you know, I did some dumb things. I was silly. I shouldn't have done it. I've apologized or I will apologize to Mr. Labro, unfortunately, he's passed, since passed away. Um, and, 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 and then move beyond that. I mean, you don't want this to become sort of an indictment of your character now based on behavior that you did maybe one time uh, in high school. Uh, and I think, you know, this has the potential to, to grow into something that it doesn't right. need to. Uh, and I think you're right. The, the selective memory on something like this is kind of hard for the public to digest. Uh, and so it's better to just get out in front and say, look, it was a dumb thing to do. I don't think it had, reading the article, I didn't walk away thinking he did it because he was uh, presumed homosexual as much as they seem to have a problem with the fact that he had long blonde hair. So, yeah. I, you know, it, it's, I think you just put this behind you in a very clean way. But clearly it was bullying. Jonathan, if yes. these four eyewitnesses are to be believed, it's clear that Romney was not a fringe or peripheral member of the gang, as David Korn was just saying. He was actually the leader who maliciously targeted this young boy and then took scissors to his hair. He's not in the gang, he's the leader of the gang. Yeah, the, this, that incident in particular, it's, um, it's violent. It's physically violent, it's emotionally violent, and, you know, it, especially in high school when, when kids are still trying to, they're just starting to try to figure out who they are and how they fit in and where they fit in in the grand scheme of things. To have something like that happen to you, Mr. Lobner never forgot it. Those other five guys never forgot it. And I find it hard to believe that Mitt Romney forgot it. You know, it, it, the thing that I think is so, that resonates so much for people about this story is not so much what happened and who was involved. It's the fact that we've read these stories as recently as last month. There's a movie out now called Bully by Lee Hirsch ab about teens in several cities, small, several cities across the country who have faced bullying for one reason or another. Doesn't matter whether the kids are, are, are gay or perceived to be gay, right. but they were all perceived to be different in some way. It was happening when Mitt Romney was at Cranbrook. It's happening today to millions of kids across the country right now. Today, he yeah. has the opportunity, with what Jonathan just said about the discussion of bullying in the public yep. arena, yeah. to address this, and he I, fails I agree, Martin, to do I agree so. With that. And that's what speaks to his character. Now, John, Congressman Barney Frank was on our broadcast some weeks ago. I want to play you something that he said about Mitt Romney that reminded us after we read the story in today's Post. Listen to this. There's also in Mitt Romney, and people uh, don't fully understand this. There is a meanness at his core.